The slim fast 14 day effect on your New Year's resolution. Day one, the new year. You want to kick it off with a bang, and you're not just talking about fireworks. Day 14, you're ready to start this year right, looking great and preferably on top. Two weeks is all it takes to get what you really want. Swap two meals a day for slim fast protein shakes or bars, get in a 30 minute workout, and stick to a 1200 calorie diet to lose up to six pounds in your first 14 days. Find Slim Fast in a store near you. You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Girls After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Girls After Show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Girls After Show. I am your host, Kelly, and we are in Season 3, Episode 4, Dead Inside. And we have a full panel tonight. We've even got a guy in the mix. So joining me... Miriam Gonzalez. <laughs> Hi. And across from us. And uh, Spicy Mari back in full effect. Yay. Welcome, welcome back. Yay. And our guest host tonight. And I am Jerron. Welcome. Thank you. We are very here. excited to have a male's a male's perspective tonight. Oh, and he's from San me. Diego, so you yeah. know he's very bright. 619 <laughs> You know 619. It was a pretty intense episode today. A lot of, like, deep thoughts and selfishness. And, you know, let's start out with talking about David. Oh, poor David. Now, we knew David was... A, something was going on with David last episode. We were talking about that. He was, he was definitely high on something in the last episode. He was crazy. He was fighting. He was, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. And then, you know, we find out at the beginning of this episode that he has passed away right and in a very traumatic kind of tragic way too like found face down in a river like in the hudson of all <laughs> places <laughs> not okay <laughs> But they didn't do a toxicology report, right? So we don't know what it was of. No, but they, you know, she, they suspect, you know, on Gawker that it could be, it wasn't drugs. Right, Gawker. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> website right the last, CNN, yeah. it's all about Gawker. Yeah. The last episode, though, showed otherwise. I think he was definitely on something. We never saw him take anything, but just kind of, we just kind of suspected right. that he was just. But see, that's how rumors get started, guys. <laughs> 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 Definitely all speculation. And they did, they are doing a toxicology test on him, but they're not going to release the report. Right. So, you know, they're never really going to know. Well, he asked happened. Ray at the, in the last episode when he approached him if he was the guy from the one crazy uh, application. And then he asked him if he had any Coke with him. So. We just don't know. We just know. assume he was a partier <laughs> in that sense. But a we don't bit know. With his hands in the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was DJing at the party? Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> His mixes. Right. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing, and uh, kind of like goes throughout the episode, is Hannah's reaction to her friend, editor, kind of mentor, and the person that really did champion her, her reaction to his death. And we kind of, say, we've always talked about since the beginning of this series that she has been a very self-involved, very mm -hmm. selfish person. And unfortunately, we see that that really hasn't changed much. And everybody's kind of reaction around her is pretty interesting. But I mean, like, what do you, you know, we know her age, we know how she is. I mean, how did you feel about her kind of wor more worried about her book than kind of what has happened here? I feel like if you don't have a close personal relationship with someone, that it's easy to be insensitive. And I think that some people who haven't experienced death take it very lightly. Mm -hmm. And because it's not a close loved one to her, that unfortunately, and I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not defending Hannah, I'm just saying that I understand her not being as concerned about his well-being or maybe the family or going through a mourning process because really he just was the means to a project for her but they were kind of close. I mean, I kind of think they were closer than that. I felt he, like she was her mentor, though. Well, but am he, I? He gave her her first real opportunity for a book. He talked to her about, you know, he he 
he let her all that OCD crap like he let her kind of go through that and come out of it and was you know not necessarily there like a friend but you know as far as being an employer or somebody that, that you know gave her an advance and believed in her writing to kind of go through that process with her that's a little bit more than somebody you barely know that's true when you put it like that I'm reevaluating their moments it's and just, <laughs> you know, that, that's just what, and I feel like that's what Adam was just kind of shocked by like it's not just you know this person that you kind of would come into an office hey what's up and no they had like real conversations mm -hmm. they actually went through this kind of creative kind of helped develop together. her yes yeah and she has no reaction whatsoever she literally feels nothing a lot of people, like it's a stranger well a lot of people do have a different way of handling things sometimes it takes a little time I mean I know for me personally um, when death has happened there's a, there's that moment of shock mm -hmm. so we don't know if it'll hit her down the road and for what reason although we see in the upcoming stuff which we'll get into predictions about later um, but you know everyone has their own way of handling it like I handled my grandmother's death totally different than I handled my grandfather's you know what I mean and I was very close to both of them it was like I was numb for one because I expected it to happen but then like you know something so simple triggers it like I, anytime I uh, music will trigger an emotion, you know, like um, oh god, what's that song by Lincoln Park? In the end, you know, I hear that song that and all you, going right there? you know what it is. When my grandmother passed, my mm -hmm. grandfather came up to me and put his arm around my waist while I was doing like the family collage or whatever, and uh, like all of a sudden it hit me. And then when he died, I took it the hardest. It was really bizarre. So you just don't know which person and how they're going to affect you. And I think that down the road with Hannah, this could affect her in a big way because the reality is that he is the only person that believed in her. He was the only person that gave her a chance. Her parents don't even believe in her. Mm -hmm. To her to her parents, they think that all of her writing are just essays, you know, and to the fact that it's an ebook and not an actual published book, that's a big thing, you know? I mean, she had a little bit of opportunity, mm -hmm. and the fact that maybe down the road, re it might hit her. The reality might hit her that it's over. But even then, I feel like she's still not going to miss him, per se, but she's going to be enlightened at what he was able to do for her. I think she's taking yeah. that for granted. Yeah. So I think even in her mourning <clears throat> process, it's still going to be like, but nobody else believed in me but him. Not so much, oh, I miss his presence. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where the disconnect is, and that's what's very interesting about her character and not being, as, like, really associated with anything or anybody. It's all about her and how each person in her life affects her, what they can and cannot do for her, and what they can and cannot provide, you know, for her writing well, and how they can make it grow. Weren't you guys shocked at her reaction about how she would handle Adam's death? When he saw how disconnected she was, and he was far more emotional and attached than she was, and I thought it was his reaction was, oh, he's just appeasing his girlfriend and trying to be sensitive to her needs right now. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he was more affected than she was, and he questioned how she would handle his death in return. And Hannah's response ended with, yes, and then I would see, you know, try to figure out how I would pay the rent. And I was like, what? And that's the thing. I mean, even he says, he goes, you know, she's like, are you mad? And he goes, no, I'm not mad. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared that you don't feel for me the way that I feel for you. And he makes that a very valid point. Maybe she just understands that death is a part of life. You know, like, it's going to happen no matter what. So you no need to get upset about it. It's going to occur. If she was more of an insightful person, I could go that way, but she's not. <laughs> like, she's just not. She's not. She's like just... Give the doubt, you she, know? You know, but I, I think it's a little bit even more to it, and, what, and from what Adam's trying to say is, like, I don't think that she has any kind of regard for human life at all. Like, even if she didn't really know him all that well, someone died. Not only did someone die, but someone, like, died a very tragic death. I mean, to be found face down in a river, it's mm -hmm. not like, you know getting in a car accident or like said like you don't know well, I mean what if it was a murder what if it was like you don't really know yeah. you know what I mean but to have no reaction whatsoever other than oh sh what's gonna happen <laughs> to my book is just that's, that's just such an inhumane kind of response I think she's selfish it's just it's just she's really but I mean are people selfish. like but to be that selfish where you can't even stop for a second and be like wow and just kind of take in what the situation is. Like, you don't necessarily have to cry. Everybody does mourn in a different way, and yeah. I'm not saying it has to be one way or the other, but to acknowledge that a tragedy did happen is what I feel she never did do. I think she kind of pretended to to appease Adam, but she really doesn't get it. Boy, did she ever. <laughs> well, and then we see, like, the opposite end of this spectrum where we get to see someone who's extremely emotional, like Laid, mm -hmm. and he is goes into the story about his turtle, and he's, come, you know, he is very emotional of for everything like he embraces her and he's comforting and it was just interesting to see him because he seems so connected mm -hmm. and everybody around him is dead and Hannah's 
very <laughs> just nonchalant about it. Yeah. But I really liked when, you know, when Carolyn comes in the mix and, you know, she's wacky and, you know, she's very whatever she's her personality is. She's crazy. I don't she's even know how to describe there. her. But she, it's interesting kind of the way she took on what was happening between Adam and Hannah. Mm -hmm. She, like, makes up this story, this tragic story, really to see what Hannah's reaction is going to right. be. And she doesn't, she doesn't, you know, her, doesn't even, like, her brows don't, you know, do anything. There's no, like, real facial expression. She's worried about the dress. How tiny was the dress? Well, her reaction and was this, supposed like, to be sensitivity towards Adam, right? Like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe he went through this. Like, you know, what a painful experience. Well, just any, just sensitivity, period. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily, it didn't even have, just for the story. Like, just to be like, wow, that's a very sad, tragic story at all. No, she was worried about how tiny was the dress. <laughs> like, she, that's, like, there's no, like, emotional, like, connection. I think Ray said it best. Like, she, you know, her sociopathic detachment. <laughs> Do you think that maybe that she feels this way or doesn't feel this way because she doesn't, she's an only child so she's never had like an interaction with another, like a sibling or I mean, we don't know what her cousin situation is. The only person that she's truly attached to like that is Jessa. Mm -hmm. I think that if something were to happen to Jessa, she would lose it. I mean, she got her OCD back just because Jessa left her behind. And we did see her get a little bit choked up when J Jessa came, you know, back. She's like, I love you. You can't ever leave me again. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was some type of sensitivity there in that situation. I felt like there was a little bit of vulnerability. Yeah, a little bit. I think Jessa's but the only person that triggers that for her. Like, Adam doesn't even do that for her, you know. Um, Sh uh, Shosh obviously doesn't do it. Marnie doesn't do it for her. So it's interesting to see what she emotionally attaches to, and it would be interesting to find out down the road why she's attaching to them. Mm-hmm. But or why is she just so disconnected? Because you're saying that it's a possibility that she's an only child. But I've seen only, child, only children who actually care. Like, there's... She's oblivious. She's oblivious because I don't think she gets that close to people. And we saw that in her interactions with, um, with Adam when they first started, you know, their, their back and forth as far as, like, he didn't want to be serious, then she wanted to be serious, then he... It was like that whole thing where they're... It's like give and take, give and take, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But her attachment to Jessa... For some reason, like there's a closeness there. If anything, if she is, if she is, on, blah, if she's an only child, Jess is probably the closest thing to a sister that she's ever had. But I feel like too, like it's something to be to be empathetic, to be to uh, not even sympathetic, but just empathetic to a situation is something that you either are or you aren't. I don't think it's something that you gradually learn. Either you're that kind of person that feels things for others. You know, it, not, it doesn't even have to be full force. It doesn't have to be anything, but it's just either you care about the the kind of like the value of other people in general, mm -hmm. or you don't. Mm -hmm. It's just, I've seen so many different stages of that. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I know a lot of like only children that aren't that closed right. off and aren't that Kind of I'm not saying it's specifically to only no, children. I'm saying right, in her, specific, yeah, her yeah. specific situation. Um, she, she's just, she's a different kind of person. And I think that it, all these, like for her, it's, it's the circumstance, it's the situation that's going to trigger whatever it is. And for her, her intention with um, David was he's my editor, he's the one that's going to publish my book. There was no other type of emotional connection with them, and we see that because in the past episode, she didn't even invite him to her birthday party. She mentioned it to him. But which is something she, she even says to Adam when he's like, I mean, come on, you knew him. He was at your birthday party. And her <laughs> response is, I didn't invite him. I mean, that is not okay. That is not, like, that's just not well, look okay. At, look at who she's closest with, though. You said she ha only has this love for Jessa, okay? Jessa has a BFF that faked her death to stay away from her. Yeah. So, and look at her reaction, you know, to that. She wasn't like, what's wrong with me? Why would somebody do this to me? She sought her out to throw in her face that her life is going to suck. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, and that's another thing that we've talked about repeatedly is how each individual character is very selfish in their own way. I mean, we've watched them all go through that. I think the most unselfish of them all, really, is Adam. Like, 
it, he's been the one to kind of go out of his own way for someone else that we've seen yeah. when he kind of came in to rescue Hannah. Marnie doesn't even do that. Like, she puts herself first. Shoshana is all worried about her <laughs> bandana collection. And ta when she's talking about her friend dying, she talks about how there wasn't room, really room in the group. So it kind of worked out. It's like mean I girls. mean, it's just like, and Jessa, we see all the time, she ditched Hannah, goes off, and doesn't understand what she does. So mm -hmm. each one of them has their own kind of bout with selfishness oh, in a really, a like, really, really deep way. And we just see it in different stages. Yeah. But for this, just thinking because Hannah's in this, this relationship where she gets to kind of see what it is to, to care about somebody, to be with someone else, I just was hoping that it would kind of progress her a little bit more, and it just hasn't. But, I mean, oh well. Maybe it will later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. But with some fast two weeks is all it takes to get what you really want. In 14 days, the only thing higher than your confidence will be your hemline. This podcast is brought to you by Slim Fast. So <laughs> speaking of slimming Ow. fast and slimming down, Marnie and her, like, super she's a maniac thing going on. Yes. Marnie is, I've said it before when we were watching it, the most annoying character on the show to me this season. Um, I think, she, I feel like she usually is, but just just more exceptionally this time. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. the, I, th I think that she is em was embarrassed about the video mm -hmm. um, that was being played, but at the same time, why did she, why did she quit? I don't understand that. I think right now Marnie's going through a really hard time. You know, we see her doing, you know, it comes with her opening, running down the street, listening to some crazy maniac type song. And, you know, she's making, she's listening to meditations while she's making her coconut water, you know, shake or protein shake or whatever. She's going through something. And it's so funny because I said straight out, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so Marnie right but now. But we've seen her go through a breakup before. But this is a little different because now she's, she's broken up with her close relationship with Hannah. They're no longer as close as they used to be. Charlie is way out of her life, and she's, I mean, we've seen in the last two episodes how depressed she is over that. And she's not doing what she loves. So here, you know, Ray's in the coffee shop with, um, is it Hermie? Yeah. And Herm. Yeah. Herm, Herm, mm -hmm. Herman or whatever. They're watching the video, and they're making fun of her. And I think it's just one of those moments where you're like, you know what? And she tried in the last episode so hard to get it off of YouTube. <laughs> and she didn't want to call Charlie to get his password. But I like what his screen name was. Well, I didn't even see what it was. <laughs> oh, wait, I wrote it. Keep going. I wrote but, it down. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things where she's kind of like, she's a, she's a crock pot. She's, you know, she's, a, she's, pot, she's sizzling right now. Mm -hmm. And it's like one thing after another, after another, after another. And it's like, what is it going to give in? And she has no choice but to have this shitty job. But she has it. And after she sees that they're making fun of her, it's like, I don't need this. Mm -hmm. I Fancy people want to work with me. <laughs> but do they, though? Because like fancy child people when really wanted to work with you, you would be working at the coffee shop. Let's really take a look at this situation and step back. Who are fancy people? And I she's don't know why. That's the thing that bothers me is that she's always been that way. That she's always too good for everybody. She looks down on everybody. <laughs> she's And she's just really been in a place the last two seasons where she is just not. She has been broken off that pedestal, has been cut down, and she doesn't like it. And I really think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, Hannah, for the most part, had a job, was working on a book, has the boyfriend that lives together, and has mm. this life that she feels she she deserves to have and I think that's kind of like where that comes from like for the birthday party and just c trying to make it all about her and kind of embarrassing her when she didn't need to and kind of all that passive-aggressive underhanded crap that goes along with oh, co competitive girlness you know that was intentional oh absolutely for oh, sure. Oh, I thought that that was just, once again, another selfish act. Like, I don't care how my friend's feeling. I want the shine to be on me. Right, on but, but I feel like it was on I it feel was like it was intentional on purpose. embarrassment. Yeah, of course, because she specifically told her, I don't want to do this with you, and she does it anyway. I don't think she meant to embarrass her. Oh, for sure. I, I, I think just, I she do. meant to do it as... This is my only way to get attention at your birthday party. Yeah, that's what I felt that she was. Because she, she could have sang by herself. Thirsty for attention. She could have sang by herself. But then it wouldn't no, be but it wouldn't justified be, yeah. for the birthday. But th if I include my, you know, the birthday girl in it, then I can have my moment to shine. I want to know what the podcast people think. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I 
it was on purpose. I really, <laughs> truly do. Especially because she's a better singer than Hannah. And then just all, like, she still gets to be kind of the number one person. And then this whole interaction with, um, with Ray, just that very childish kind of stomping my foot, pounding my fist reaction, and then quitting. It's just really fancy people want to work with you and you act like that. How, you know, come on. Let's, let's, let's get it together. <laughs> she's, she is. She's just really lost and she's going about it in a very childish way. She can't accept what's happened. You know, and that's why I was saying, like, last episode, I want her to find, like, an older man to date for a second that can just look at her and be like, mm. what the hell is going on in your life? Oh, yeah. But didn't she try that with the artsy-fartsy guy? Oh, but that wasn't... That but, wasn't but dating. Not like that, that. that was that straight sex. Yeah, no. Not with some, <laughs> that was no. straight dirty sex. I love how sex. you say that with a smile. That was just <laughs> sex. It was just straight dirty sex. <laughs> there was some definitely some, like, creepiness going on in that guy's place. Yeah, that's true. So she hasn't... Okay, she hasn't been in a good place for a while. No, but I just want somebody kind of older to come into her life life and you know I thought Adam was gonna maybe like try to get for her. Marty um I mean I'm sorry not Adam uh Ray oh. I thought Ray was uh going to try to lay the moves on Marty just she's in a vulnerable place he's in a vulnerable place uh they're two people who, two complete opposites she thinks she, he's she, you know be too good for him and I feel like he's very like disconnected as well and insensitive mm -hmm. and I was surprised at his reaction because for a second he had some sensitivity and was trying to run after Marty and so yeah. I just think that later on he's going to call her up like, hey, I'm sorry. Well, we saw in the preview she kind of goes to him and is like, I want to know what's wrong with me. And I could see I could see where that you know may lead to something, but I really hope it doesn't because I absolutely don't want to see that. I don't even think Shoshana would care. Not even so much for that, but I want like someone else to come in, mm -hmm. like an, a non-biased person that doesn't know any of them and can really look at her and just kind of be like, "What are you doing? Mm -hmm. you well, know, like, what are you like? What are you doing?" Isn't Ray that person though? He's no, most, he knows I mean, aside Charlie. From, uh, aside from Adam. Uh, what does that have to do with anything? Twenty-something girls, they do that to each other all the time. Yeah, but Ray acts like them. I, I just don't feel like that. I mean, yes, he's he can like look at situations in a different way and whatever and may bring some insight in. But for, uh, just for me personally, I would really like to see kind of an outside person like come in that doesn't know anything about anything and is watching her behavior and seeing how she is and can just really be like, really? You want to make your life better, but this is what you're doing? Like, let's talk this out. Like, what is going on with you? Because I do feel she needs to talk to somebody, but she needs to talk to somebody that she's not trying to put up a front for. Like, she really needs to talk to somebody about what's going on so she can really deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like she's always trying to be kind of like the one that has it all together and all of this. And she won't really talk it out. And her and her friends are kind of selfish. None of them really want to hear it anyway. That's not necessarily so. true. I think that hmm. you can be that you can be a Marnie and still want to talk it out. No, I think she does want to talk it out, but I don't. I think like with the people that's around her right now, I just don't think that that's it, it's going to be very like constructive for her. Oh yeah, <laughs> without a that, doubt. I mean, yeah. I mean that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying like I would want someone else to come in that can really help her kind of like work through this because it's already been a season and a half, you know, and she's still kind of nuts and crazy and pretends like she's so much better off than she is. So she, so her whatever is going on with them is not really working. So I'd like to kind of see somebody else like come in and help her kind of go through that because not even her mom is really kind of helping her her yeah. mom is putting her down a little bit more than really trying to find out what's going on let's get some male perspective mr ferguson yes what I, was you ask, I was gonna ask if marty the way, is the way she is because of her mom because you see how crazy her mom is the mm -hmm. way she treats uh marnie i was wondering if that's the way that marnie is why marnie's so crazy i mean that definitely and, could like, have a so lot to do is her mom people. not in a relationship her mom's not in a relationship right well remember her mom is kind of was kind of like dating and kind of a little bit a 20 something year old at one point yeah because I think like, she, she got divorced or something like early on and so she was kind of having this like fun kind of midlife kind of thing like dating and like all that and Marnie was pretty embarrassed by it so I remember but, when, uh, when Marnie was talking to Hannah on speakerphone and her mom was mm -hmm. right there yeah. meeting Marnie the whole time mm-hmm and just putting her down for her right. place and just not being very supportive. And that, you know, and again, that's, that's why tough. I'm saying, like, it's like all these things that she's dealing with are real things that everybody does. And we're not like it. Like, you and I, in particular, are not really liking how she's handling it. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying, like, it would be very nice to see someone else kind of come in just to kind of help her go through that because no one that's around her right now is making it any better. They're kind of making it a little bit worse. I think that, I don't know, when it comes to Lena's writing, I think the point of her going down this direction the way she is is the fact that realistically this is how some people go through it and these are how this is how some people think you know what I mean like not everyone thinks linear which you know we got that lecture from Jessa in the episode about you know 
thinking linear or being linear in life. But um, I think Lena's writing specifically is just pointing out to us that not everything is as cookie cutter as we all expect it to be, that there's other ways that people handle it. You know, Hannah's numb to death and Adam and Ray are not. Um, Marnie's dealing with this thing and she thinks she's better than everyone else. There, we all know a person like that. Mm -hmm. Do you think Hannah knows that she is detached from feeling remorse over death? Because at the end she tells David's story. Or tells, um, tells Adam the story. About, yeah, about I, Mar I still Mar was that. Right. Because I don't think that she gets it. I think that she just w is telling him what she wants to hear, what he wants to hear, because she doesn't want to fight with him. And she doesn't, she, I, I, don't, I, I really she, don't think she Well, she kind of it. had a moment of vulnerability when she was talking to Adam's sister. Tell me Adam's sister's name Caroline. again. Caroline. Caroline. Uh -huh. um, she said, you know, I'm afraid that he's going to realize that I'm this, you know, numb, detached, yeah. you know, creature, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I think she does know that she is, and I don't think she cares. I don't think she wants to be a more sensitive person. I think she's perfectly fine with the way that she is, but she doesn't want to lose Adam. And that's how self-involved she is. She's like, I'll go to the point where I will lie about my emotions and my sensitivity to keep what I want. Mm -hmm. She's you just like a man to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really interesting about that? It's the fact that when Caroline is talking to her about being on medication and how it made her feel, she's like, you know, it made me feel less of a person and you know I was just kind of going through the motions and then before you know it it was just this very just not like really not good roller coaster in life and Hannah makes a really interesting comment she's like you know I depend on my emotions to write to be a good writer mm -hmm. she's in so many words she says that and the fact that she's not feeling anything with this whole death thing mm. is it just goes to show what kind of writer she right. really is. she doesn't have emotion to how she well, writing. remember that's what David told her when she when they very first were talking about this ebook and her first drafts that she sent through. He's like, he was telling her and he was criticizing her for that. Like, what is this? This is not real. This mm -hmm. is not the kind of stuff we talked about. This is you trying to make something be that isn't. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to go into your own life. You need to pull out your own emotion and you need to really write about your own experience. That's what I love about that's what I was drawn to in the first place. Like, you're trying to impress me with something that just isn't real. Like, you need to go back and kind of dig back into there. And I feel like he was helping her kind of do that which again is so interesting on how she really really feels nothing about him being mm. gone. Like, not even for a second, like, at all. Well, I think to, on, on to, to, you know, tail end the whole David interaction, when they were having chocolate teacup tea mm -hmm. or coffee, um, he starts talking about the new writings that she brought in and they all had to do with her OCD so like when he went to the birthday party he knew exactly who Adam was, he knew exactly who Marnie was right. because she finally has started bringing that into her writing right she's still developing as a writer and so like I said I think one of the reasons why she's not feeling such a connected or she's feeling so disconnected or not feeling anything at all and just is disconnected is because there was no emotional attachment there's no aside from he's bringing and giving me my book opportunity there so for her to feel something it's like well I just see this guy it's very but like, that, and that's that, what I'm saying. The part that, that she sad. thinks her relationship is is that it's. Just, I don't think that she looks at it deeper. I don't think she can see those moments, those intimate moments, mm -hmm. or what he's developing in her. And that's why I go back to my initial point: is that she just sees him as somebody providing an opportunity right. for her, like you said. Yeah. But it also is sad because it shows that sh there's not, at least for me, it shows that there's not a lot of even attachment to her own writing. Like to understand that I became a little bit of a better writer mm -hmm. because this person had a conversation with me that helped me to kind of unleash a little bit of something that I wasn't ready to do yet. Like just kind of like really talking it out, but not even being attached enough to her writing to get it. That's just like what's so interesting about kind of her character and how she's going through it. And, and it's... You know, when people are young and, and, again, when you kind of live a certain way and you don't, and, and as we see for her, she never really had to work really hard for anything and she's just kind of starting to do all of that and uh, she gets a lot of help from a lot of people and it may be easier to kind of, kind of brush things off and not really get kind of like the underlying point of it. So I definitely understand that. And, you know, little by little, I mean, it's baby freaking steps that we're seeing her kind of like come out of that and just appreciate what these other people do for She's her. She's been babied the whole time, though. That's the mm -hmm. thing. That's why it's baby steps. Her parents have babied her up until she was 22. 
Mm -hmm. 22 or 23. She's just now having to experience life in the real. And I don't think she, one, is ready to do that. And we see that. And two, knows how to handle that. Everything to her has been handed down on a silver platter. You know, um, college was e not easy, but easy because her parents took care of everything. Hell, even her, tran you know, being in New York by herself, living, you know, being an intern for God knows how long. <laughs> It was easy. Her parents paid her rent. She's been taken care of. So, I don't know. That's why I think like the whole babying and the only child thing. I don't know. I think it plays into it. She's oh, been for coddled. Sure. Yeah. She's been that, coddled. For what too do you long. think um, Adam's sister's role is? Is she supposed to? Because every single episode, I feel like she makes a connection with someone. This time, I think she was trying to. She made like a little bit of a connection with Laid, maybe when she makes this like deep eye contact, and then I think she was trying to pull something out of. Uh, Hannah that she just couldn't pull it, like what is her role is she supposed to be this you know deeper figure that's bringing people to realizations I think so and I think that's what uh, Adam when she came into the picture last uh, episode didn't like she makes things a little too real she she's like she's a wacky person and we mm -hmm. see them you know she you know says that she's going on her daily constitutional and wants to take Hannah by her tea and invites Laird you know into the mix with his turtle in the palm bottle what's a daily constitutional it's just her way of saying my daily routine okay and so you know <laughs> and, and that included going to tea and then going to a cemetery and just like doing cartwheels and roly polies I thought she brought Hannah to the cemetery to hopefully like maybe run into a family that was mourning and see look look what death brings like look at this I, mean, I thought there's gonna be a lesson from that in my opinion I don't I, I don't think that's what she's doing I think she's just I think she's kooky and I think she's curious about other people and I think with this whole situation like she wanted to just kind of see is mm. like what kind of person is Hannah with this because she's I mean she's aware of the you know the kind of like the, the opposite sides that she and Adam are on and you know to make up a story like that and to kind of like sit, take her to a cemetery, make up a really sad story, you know, ha play around in the cemetery and just kind of, when you're doing cartwheels and flips and all that in a cemetery, you're kind of making the connection that it's not really that it's big of a deal. Like it's, that, it's, that it's not, that it's just, it's a playground. And mm -hmm. then they see the family, they walk by and then they run around laughing. Wait. So it wasn't really like But in that. LA, we watch movies on, on <laughs> <laughs> the graveyards. Yeah, but for this, you know, but that's not something like everybody does. Well, I mean, when you go to like, not every cemetery is like that. When you go to a cemetery, it's it's, it's a different. It's, you're not doing cartwheels and you know somersaults like down mm -hmm. the aisles to it. You know, it's just it's just a kind of a different thing. Yeah. And when I actually first moved here and I like heard about that, I thought it was really weird that people that to I me have that is people like did that. That's a little. But don't people go there for uh, Dia de los Muertes and have picnics and everything as well too, like in the cemetery? Yeah, I think. Well, honor the thing, the that's, like, okay. that's like a religious thing to like honor the dead like and like. Party. Time as well, whatever, you know. and so, but but that's but what still, I'm it's saying, a form like, of honor. Like it's it's to to it's to honor the people, remember the people that, that are passed that away. Are like that's actually the whole there, point though. That. But there was no connection between Hannah and anybody that, that was there. They were more doing flips and cartwheels. Right. And, and, and you see uh, Caroline make a connection between Hannah and herself as well too. Like mm -hmm. when after Caroline tells uh, the story about her and Adam's cousin dying mm -hmm. and and Adam taking her to to the prom, she and is, Hannah having no emotion. You see. Uh, Caroline saying that yeah you're just like me essentially well and she's she just like it. she's like laughing at her and she's yeah. like what is wrong with you like how right. can you not and she's pointing out you had no, you know your brows didn't even like squinch together like nothing happened like you didn't have any emotion at all and she's just laughing about it you're frowned and furrow yeah and I just but feel she was like, okay with it though and so it, is it is it to show a different kind of crazy maybe well I just uh, really think that like she's the, just like curious curious mm. about kind of like getting to know this person mm -hmm. and what kind of this person and I, I really think Caroline is very non-judgmental like she really takes you for what you are because like she's nuts so she's just like okay this is the kind of person that you are it's very similar to me and she's like whatever that's your thing I like it like she's not judging her and she even tells her I'm going to call you secure but she can dress that's though what <laughs> that, that Mickey Mouse special she had on oh she's I, I thought the secure that. comment was interesting because she said you know why aren't you asking me about the exes and you know what he used to do when he was little and call his little you know winky and all that uh -huh. well to call to say that hannah's secure is hannah's not really secure she's just self-involved right they're in there but why did she call her secure i, I think she called her secure because um to be, a, a, to be a secure person you're a strong person 
you're independent, you're secure, you're strong, you don't care what people think, you're, you're strong of mind. And I think that's what she was trying to get across, that she's just a strong person, you're a secure person, but you can handle this. If you can handle this, you can handle anything. But can she? Well, I just, I just take it a little bit different than that because I, I thought that she meant it as being secure in the relationship. Like, you don't want to know about the ex-girlfriends. You don't care about all of that. Like, you're uh, secure in your relationship that you don't even care what the ex-girl, you know. Like, I just thought it, like, was that. That I'm going to call you sick because you're not asking about his ex-girlfriends. You're not asking about say, past relationships. I don't want to know about the exes. She did yeah. say that, which is odd because usually we want to know about the past. No, I don't. I don't you either. Don't? <laughs> no. no, I have a rule, okay? There is a rule. Never ask the question to that if you do not want to know the answer, okay? Don't yeah. ask me how many people I've been with. Don't <laughs> ask me about my exes because you may not like the answer. And then I don't want to have to deal with the drama attached to it. Right. So it takes a really strong person and a secure person to be with someone like myself or to be with someone like Hannah where you don't want to know. I mm -hmm. don't want to know about your exes. I don't want to know who you dated, who blew you down, you know, 10 years ago, <laughs> you know, who you lost your virginity to. I could care less. With ha what's happening now mm -hmm. is what matters and what mm -hmm. happens from this point forward. Everything from yesterday, everything from an hour ago is back there. And that's just what I thought she meant by that. Because she, I mean, she doesn't, like, she, she's getting to know her. And I, because that's what her question was. I can't believe you're not asking me about the exes. And then Hannah's like, oh, you're going to call me self-involved now, too? And mm -hmm. she's like, I'm just going to call you secure. Because she doesn't need to know about that. She doesn't, I don't think she cares. I, don't, I genuinely don't think she cares either. Because she didn't even give Adam a hard time on the episode when they ran into the They ex. ran into the ex. The ex was like, sobbing and screaming and, and gorgeous and <laughs> Hannah yeah. could care less and she looks at Hannah like oh dear Hannah like right. it was such a very like but I, I, I thought she handled that situation really well actually I don't even think she, she handled like, it yeah, I just think she, just she like, whatever. didn't care like mm, well it happened like yeah. I don't think it, she even, it even registered on her radar that she was mm -hmm. being dissed or <laughs> any of that at the same time yeah. and then she didn't even ask Adam you know gosh Let's go deeper. What did you do to that girl? Like, she did not care whatsoever. Because does it really matter? If, I think that... Yeah! I think that it does matter if who you're with has experiences with someone else. And I think that during the course of their relationship, how he treated her could have been, uh, or said something about him and, you know, Hannah's relationship currently. You know, it's it's funny that you say that. Like, I just had that oh wow moment, mm -hmm. and it's the fact that here he is giving her shit about not feeling when someone died, where he just left this girl on her ass, mm -hmm. and she could have been pregnant, but he just left her, and he didn't feel anything. So, it, like I said, I think it's circum it all depends on the circumstances, you know, to when and who it is that you feel towards. And because he feels so deeply for Hannah, he's going to feel for everything that she goes through. Mm -hmm. Because Hannah feels so deeply for Jessa, she's going to feel everything that she goes through. Nobody really feels for Marnie, and nobody really <laughs> cares about <laughs> Jessa. I mean, not Jessa, uh, Shoshana. Shoshana. So, it's, it's, I think it's circumstantial. Could be. I think at one point, uh, Ray felt for Shoshana. I think he still oh, does. He's yeah. still trying he's to still deal with her. It. Oh, please. Yeah, he definitely he's, does. He's definitely trying to kind of better himself, I think, because of the last conversation that they had, which, you know, whatever drives you is a good, you know, I really think I it's think a good thing. I think that if a breakup or a partner can drive you, use whatever force you need in order right. to move forward. Absolutely. And that's kind of what I want to see Marnie, Marnie do. Marnie, exactly. It's because there's a lot of crappy things that happen to everybody. I mean, life, is, like, life is hard. It sucks. And, you know, it's, she's lucky that she has even someone around. And I want her to take advantage of that and try to, you know, like take a breath for a second and just really see what she wants. And at least I want us to be able to see that. Like her, she, she could be doing that and we're just not seeing it. You know, so I kind of want to mm -hmm. see her kind of do have a little bit of reflection. I think it's hard for her to do that because, I, and I, th it was, I don't know, maybe it was you that said it, it's who she's surrounded by. You know, if you're surrounded by weak-minded people, it's hard to become a stronger person when everyone around you is weak, when you're the strongest link. Mm. And not to say that she thinks, not because we she says she's above everyone, but she is a lot stronger. Or she is more on top of everything. And we've seen that in the past before she kind of lost everything. Mm -hmm. You know, she's on top of, you know, her career. She was on top of her career and what she wanted. But the fact that it came into play that she didn't know if she wanted to do that anymore. And, you know, she lost everything. It's hard. And so it's, when you're in that position and you're surrounded by weak-minded people, it's hard to scrape yourself up. You almost, she almost has to find new friends. 
That's why I keep saying I wanted to find a new friend. <laughs> oh, I thought you wanted to find a new boyfriend. Well, that's why like, she was a new boyfriend. boyfriend. Well, I just mean like just because of kind of, of, of the kind of character that I see her to be, I mm-hmm. think it would kind of be faster if she met a guy because that's kind of like what I think she wants. Right. But even if it was just a new friend, like and just somebody. But, but I feel like it should be somebody a little bit older. You know, I agree with you as far as her character is concerned. For mm-hmm. her and for a lot of women, I feel like. Uh, a relationship or a man that you respect can take you there, can help guide you mm-hmm. and kind of get you there. I think or mess I'll, you up. Or mess you up. But I feel like what what you know Kelly's saying is that she wants a positive figure to get her there. My my mom has a saying, tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. And she's not walking with the right people to get to where we would like to see her go. Mm. So she's yeah. not this whiny I mean think of think about it. Sh- she's being whiny. Hannah's whiny. Um, she's being, you know, out there with how, what she's doing and not really caring. Kind of Jessa, you know, childish with her stopping feet like Shoshana. Exactly. <laughs> so she's taking in from these people instead of what she really should be doing. Mm-hmm. She should be around more creative people if she wants to be in the creative field. If she wants to be fancy. Go get fancy friends. Go to freaking happy <laughs> yeah. hour at the nicest bar in New York after you get off working at the coffee shop. Right. Don't yeah. tell Hannah that she can look better like that if she wanted every day. <laughs> Again, like I, she definitely needs to kind of come out of that a little bit and and try to find like-minded people. If that's you know that's kind of the thing that everybody says, especially here in Hollywood. If you want to live a certain way, you got to hang around a certain amount of right, the right people, right? Uh-uh. It's just kind of like how that goes. <laughs> it's like you know if you. You know, you want to, if she wanted to get into music, like, what happened with that? The, so, one bad video, and that's, that's it? Like, yeah, she gives up? Yeah, it seems up? like she really does want to sing. Right. And she just, you know, that one video is kind of, it has that shattered her dreams. We haven't even gotten into all of that yet. Oh, speaking of shattered dreams, poor Jessa finding out that Seasons is dead. I mean, that was, like, Well, not that her friend is alive. Like, she had this friend, Season, her favorite friend she thought was dead, and she finds out she's alive. Her favorite friend who starred in Fruitville. <laughs> Melanie Station, Diaz. Yes, yes she's shout gorgeous. out to her. She's, yeah, she's yeah. very cute. Well, the fact that, you know, um, her seasons knew, just like everybody else knows about Jessa, that she's the kind of person that doesn't really feel. And, you know, she got the invitation to the funeral, but we find out she didn't go. So they played on it. And it's because Jessa could care, she's another person that could care less about how anyone's feeling. And we see that in her action, interaction with Hannah when they're talking about death. Mm-hmm. Um, she could care less about how anyone's feeling. It's another selfish situation. And and Seasons was in a position when they were friends that was not in a, a really good place. She was, uh, you know, an addict. She was trying to get help. She, instead, she brings her to some, like, random thing instead. <laughs> and she, it's like you, you, the way that Seasons had to break away from Jessa mm-hmm. just to have a normal life, which we see that she's got, you know, a baby, a brownstone, and a cool-looking husband. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely was cool. But then me. it goes back to what you said earlier: is like Jessa just has a very negative reaction to it, and this is not all. This isn't going to work out for you, and she storms out because she's hurt and she doesn't know how to process that. Yeah. But a normal human, if you really miss your friend, and Jessa's not an addict anymore would come back into the situation and say, gosh, I can't believe it was that bad that you had to detach yourself from me. I'm so sorry. How can we rebuild our relationship? Right, but we Normal know that humans. these girls are not, you know, <laughs> the, you know, whatever is the society's definition of I mean, normal or is. Mature they're humans. not, you know, they're not there yet. They're no. on their way. And what we saw from the previews is like she's going to have this conversation with Shoshana, and maybe we'll see that that kind of progress a little bit where she'll start to kind of get it. But but I don't do you know. think Jessica cares just a bit because she did want to go see Seasons sarcophagy, but it uh-huh. wasn't until that point when she found that Seasons was still alive that she got upset. Her tombstone. Yeah. Right. So maybe she cares. <laughs> like, just has like a little bit of something inside of her that. Well, no, I think she, she does. I just up. think she doesn't know how to deal with it. Yeah, and she just gets mad instead. Because you know what? It's always easier to be mad than it is to be sad. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we saw that when she was in rehab, how she goes about handling things and how she just doesn't handle them at all. She pr- she places them on other people. And so, um, you know, needless to say, like, it's going to be interesting to see her character develop as well as far as her feeling and for whom because it wasn't until Shoshana said you need to grieve right when I grieved for my friend Kelly I wrote a book of poems yeah you know and so <laughs> yeah she you know that was the push it was like you know you're not feeling anything you right. should deal with that right well you- let's get into predictions and see what we think is going to happen if she's going to deal with it or not and now no. you're after both <laughs> <laughs> predictions. all right we're going to let you go first 
So what's going on? So, so you we're, you're gonna like let us know what you think is gonna happen in the coming episodes, like next episode or throughout the season. Well, just I, give us your predictions. I'm guessing I'll see some more of uh, Hannah's boobs. <laughs> We got a flash of it today, not yes. as much. She very still does not that. care. <laughs> uh-huh. What else do you think? What do you think about Jessa? Do you think she's going to deal with this kind of my friends alive situation anymore? I, I think I think Jessa will. I think more so Hannah will be the one who actually come, has a, a come to Jesus moment, I guess, like and okay. actually deal with her feelings and deal with the death of David because, like you said, this episode never happened. Mm-hmm. But I, I think because by her going to each person and why it keep it keeps on coming up over and over, over and over again, uh, and her going to Adam at the end and telling that story mm-hmm. that she heard from Caroline. I think she's testing herself to see if she actually has emotions mm-hmm. and see if she can feel something. So I think it will come. It will actually happen Kay. in the coming episodes for sure. Very cool. What about you? I hope. I hope. I hope that Adam finds out that that story was not real and. <laughs> it starts to I just hope he I hope he finds out and I hope he reacts and gives her you know a piece of her mind and that the thought or the threat of losing him gets her to this emotional place. And so uh, I also hope that um, Jessa does, you know, try to make amends with her supposed dead friend. And um, I don't know, I hope, I want Caroline to hook up with someone. I want <laughs> Caroline to, to I, I, I'm, I'm surprised she hasn't hooked up with anybody yet. She tried to hook up with Ray, but he just didn't have it. <laughs> But I feel like she's going to hook up with someone. I don't know if it's going to be Lay. I don't know if it's going to be Ray. I think Ray may try to, like, lay the moves on Marnie. Marnie's very good for messing around with her best friend's booze. Mm. And so, you know, (laughs) even though it was, like, you know, a gay lover, uh, Mm. Marnie, you know, messed with one of Hannah's um, old boyfriends. And so I can see her messing with Ray um, for her own, you know, self-esteem. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, I want to see more of Shoshana getting mm-hmm. her freak on. I want to <laughs> see her getting her 20-something-year-old freak on because we haven't seen much of that yet. And, um, you know, Jessa, we're going to we're gonna go through that roller coaster with her when she feels, when she decides not to feel, and, you know, who she places it on next. Hannah, fingers crossed. Let's hope, you know, she gets her e-book picked up somewhere because apparently that's the only thing on her mind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see about the boys. I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree with all of you guys. I mean, we see from the preview that Dave, all of David's projects got dropped, so we'll see what's going to happen with that and how she's going to deal with it, and if maybe that will kind of trigger her dealing with his death and, you know, whatever in the ways that we talked about earlier. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We are excited to see kind of what plays out for the rest of the season. And next week, make sure to go to iTunes, rate, comment, and download our podcast for free, and follow us at After Buzz TV on Twitter, and you can follow me at Kelly with an IE079. You can follow me, Miriam L. Gonzalez, on Twitter. And where can they find you? I'm at the other Jaron, J A R O N. On Twitter. On Twitter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you guys can play with my Twitter at spicy underscore Madi or stroke my Instagram at spicy underscore Madi. <laughs> we'll see you guys <laughs> next week. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.